As a professional driver, you wake up smiling in the morning because you're looking forward to the drive. It's going to be a beautiful day. The weather's nice. The truck is clean. You're going to go through some exciting, beautiful scenery. It's going to be a good day. And as you settle yourself into the driver's seat, the smile slowly fades away from your face as you stare down at your ELD and realize the potential for stupid rules and bullshit that this day could bring. Today, we'll be looking through the eyes of a professional truck driver. And at the end of the video, we've got a very important question that we want you to answer honestly, so stick around. If you're a CDL holder with at least one year experience and a good safety record, you should be making $80,000 a year plus as a W-2 over the road driver. GP Transco recently upped their pay package. They've got a great benefit package. They've got a 401k with a 5% match. Check them out at gptransco.com. We refer lots of drivers to GP Transco and we always get good reports back. So you settle into the driver's seat and you stare down at your ELD and you realize that the stupid rules and the bullshit are about to begin. Now safety and the DOT wants you to start your ELD log immediately and then do the circle check. Now you know that this can come back and bite you in the butt, but you're trying to be a good guy and get along. You're trying to follow the rules and do it the way they want. So you initiate your driving time, on duty time sequence, you start your ELD and you get it to do your circle check. And sure enough, five minutes later, you get bit in the butt when you find a flat tire on the truck. Delay number one, and you're not getting paid. You phone into the dispatch, tell them the problem, tell them you need a safety truck. The dispatch is a bit of a jerk and he reminds you about your schedule and you've got to make this appointment. You can't help the fact that you've got a flat tire. It's their trailer, it's their equipment. You're just reporting in, you're trying to get it fixed. You need the tire truck, end of story, and you settle back to wait. After two hours, the tire truck is done with you, so you're finally ready to get on the road. You pull out of the truck stop, go over the overpass, down the ramp towards the interstate, and it's just wall-to-wall -wall traffic. And it's wall-to-wall -wall traffic because you've been delayed because of the flat tire. The four-wheelers don't want to let you on, but finally you manage to wiggle your way over to the middle lane just to be cut off from the right-hand side by a couple four-wheelers. The sensors and the safety equipment all go off, the bells and whistles are ringing, and you're ticked because all this extra noise is just distracting and you hate this extra sensor safety equipment. You're stuck in traffic, you're losing time because you're paid by the mile, you're losing money, and as you're fighting your way through the traffic, you encounter a swift roadblock with two swifts side by side drag racing down the interstate at five miles an hour. Can it be any more frustrating? Can this day already get any more stupid than it already has been? Finally, after losing an hour and a half in traffic, you get through town, the interstate opens up, you're rolling along, you're finally on your way and you're making time, and you see the scale is open, and you wheel on into the scale. The scale master puts you across the plate, you sit, and instead of getting the green light, you get the red light, you're going around back, and the DOT wants to do a vehicle inspection on the rig. After 45 minutes of sitting there with the inspector underneath the truck, he comes back up to the cab, tells you you've got brakes out of adjustment, and hands you a fine for having your brakes out of adjustment and shuts you down until you get the repair fixed. Protocol is that you call into dispatch and ask for a service truck, so you do that first. The dispatcher's mad because you're running late already, but you can't help it because it's not your fault. An automatic slack adjuster failed. Then you ask dispatch to connect you to the safety department because that's protocol. You've got to report in when you get a ticket. And the worst part is 
the ticket is made out to you, the driver, rather than to the carrier, so you're responsible now to pay this fine. After another delay of an hour and a half, while the service truck finishes up the brake work, you're eventually ready to go again and you roll back out onto the interstate, happy to be going and on your way. You've got the customer's GPS coordinates and address programmed into your GPS. You get off the ramp following the GPS instructions and encounter a low bridge that according to the GPS isn't really there. Another delay, 45 minutes later, you found your way around the low bridge, made it to the customer, and backed into the door. You go in to see the receiver, and he's got two pieces of bad news for you. Number one is, you're three hours late for your appointment, so they're not going to take your load today. And number two is, you can't use the washrooms in the warehouse. Truck drivers aren't allowed to do that. Okay, another hurdle, another delay. Back out to the cab, contact dispatch, find out what it is they want you to do now. You call up the dispatch, she says, well, nothing we can do about it now. Uh, he chews you a butt for missing your appointment. He contacts the safety department, who's going to take points off your bonus because you're late, and you tell, you tell him that you'll just stay there for the night because there's no truck stops anywhere near where you are, and you back into the lot at the, at the receivers. Because there's no truck stop anywhere near you, you decide that dinner's going to have to be that stale bag of potato chips that you've got in the bunk because that's all you've got back there to eat. So you back into the back of the lot, grab your stale potato chips, check your phone to find out how your bank account's doing. Today was payday, so you'll want to see your new balance after the trucking company's paid you. You pull up your account on your phone and you look at the balance and you can't believe it. It's far lower than you were expecting and you think, man, all those hours I put in and that's all the money that I made after taxes and deductions, you're upset, you can't believe it. You pull out your calculator and match it up from the hours divided into the money that you've made and figure out that you're working last week for $7.75 an hour. You look at your pay statement and you're frustrated. And you think, what's the solution to this? How can I solve this problem? And you think, well, perhaps I should try a better carrier. A better carrier would pay more money per mile, so my paycheck should be higher. A better carrier would have had better equipment, so the trailer didn't get a flat tire, and the brake adjuster didn't go out of adjustment. A better carrier and a better dispatcher would have been able to bump back my appointment, so I got unloaded. Maybe that's the solution. Maybe you just need to work for a better carrier. But maybe a better carrier isn't really solving the problem. Maybe you need to make more of a job change. Maybe you should try running local so you could be home at night, you could be paid by the hour, just have a whole lifestyle change and get off the road to see if this improves your life. But is running local really the answer? Local means that you're fighting city traffic all day long. The packages that you've checked out running local don't pay particularly well, and you're still looking at 15 hour days by the time you get home at night. But maybe trucking just isn't for you. Maybe you just need to find another job, any job, warehouse worker, pipe fitter, plumber, welder, anything but trucking, because trucking just isn't for everybody. In reality, many truck drivers have days just like this every day. So you've got to ask yourself, at the end of the day, is trucking really worth it? So tell us, what makes trucking worth it for you? Stay safe, keep the rubber side down, and we'll see you on the backhaul.